Hi, my name is Shannon Kringen and you're watching Goddess Kring. I wanted to do a video on the archetypal symbols that I see in Tom Petty, the musician, songwriter, and Tori Amos. I've actually met Tori Amos. I hand painted shoes for her in 1996. These are some shoes that I painted some high heel pumps that I painted in my Kring style and um, I am somebody who suffers actually sometimes from depression and uh, mood swings I'm very sensitive and let me just say that music has always been very important to me and it seems like right now it's 2014 and my favorite musicians are Tom Petty and Tori Amos male and female and I see them both as archetypal symbols of heroes, of warriors, of rebels, of people who stand their ground and keep the world from dragging them down. <laughs> and uh, this is my tattoo, which I designed myself, which means be yourself no matter what they say. And I got that, that line is from a Sting song called Englishman in New York, where he says, be yourself no matter what they say, be yourself no matter what they say. And this, I drew this design thinking of that, be yourself no matter what they say. So basically song lyrics are very important to me and song, singer, songwriter, musicians, performing artists are my heroes. I think more so than visual artists in a way. But let me just say that when I was 11 years old, I was in a pizza parlor and I was missing California because I grew up in San Diego and we moved to Washington State. My mom, it was my mom's decision to move us to Washington State. And I heard Tom Petty's song called Refugee on the jukebox. And I ran to the jukebox as fast as I could. And I was like, oh, my God. I said out loud, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Who is this? What is this band? I heard Refugee. And I was just like, wow. I love the sound of it, the voice, the guitar, the lyrics. Don't have to live like a refugee. I didn't even know what that meant. I just thought, yeah, I don't have to live like a refugee because I was feeling like, I wasn't starving to death like a refugee, but on some emotional level, I felt like a refugee. Like I didn't have a home, like I didn't belong. I was missing California. I was living in Washington. I felt sad. So I heard refugee and it just thrilled me. I just loved the sound of it and the energy and the emotion. And then my friend said, oh, that's Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. And to make a long story short, actually, I'll get the record right now. <laughs> it's the only record I actually have because I got rid of all my records regretfully Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers this is it damn the torpedoes refugee is on this record and I heard that song and I just went nuts and this is before I saw what he looked like and so he's become an archetype to me Tom Petty um, when I was a little girl, I used to chase little boys around the playground that had blonde hair and blue eyes. And so when I went home, my friend said, oh, my brother has that record, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. You can probably borrow it. I saw this record and I was like, oh, my God, he is so handsome. He looks like one of those little boys I used to chase around on the playground grown up. So when I was 11 years old, it was cemented into my head. This, the music of Tom Petty ever since then has been cemented in my head as something that makes me feel like everything's going to be okay and that I can trust myself, follow my heart, follow my dreams, do what I feel is right no matter what anybody else says. And I just have a big crush on him. What can I say? I mean, he's just, I think he's really handsome. Which brings me to Tori Amos. And here is the license plate that I have kept. This is my mom and I's license plate from our Volkswagen van in 1979 is when that expired. But we moved here from San Diego. 
And okay, so in 1979, that's when I fell in love with the music of Tom Petty, and he became a symbol to me because I've, it's the only band actually, I have every album of Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, and I love their music so much. And I actually wrote him his fan club every day for six months. And then his wife, in 1992, his wife wrote me back saying, I hope you can dig, you know, Tom Petty's real busy, because I wanted to paint a top hat for Tom Petty and meet him. But he doesn't like to meet fans. That's a long story. But maybe someday I'll meet him, maybe not. But that doesn't matter. What matters is I love his music. There's a lot of synchronicity here. In 1992, I heard Tori Amos. I saw the video silent all these years and it totally whew, same feeling i was just like whew, oh my god who is this musician so tom petty and tori amos are my favorite male and female songwriters and performers and you know what they both have very long careers they have both been very solid um musician a singer songwriter performers and i still love them both and so I've been following Tom Petty's music since 1979 when I was 11 years old and Tori Amos's music since 1992. Now to make a long story short, I want to hand paint a top hat for Tom Petty or a guitar strap or even some suede boots, whatever. That may never happen. But he did see my postcard and he smiled, his, his first wife, Jane, said. Uh, long story. But Tori Amos, I actually did make a, a connection with, and I painted shoes for her in 1996, at the, and she wore them on stage in Seattle at the Paramount Theater. And I also uh, saw her live in Belgium, Brussels, and I got, to, I got front row seats because I wrote an essay on why I loved her music, and they gave me front row seats. And I presented her with another pair of hand-painted shoes in 2005. And right now, 2014, synchronistically, a friend of mine interviewed Tori Amos on the phone. I don't know how he got that gig. He said it was a long story, but it's just a coincidence that this guy that I know online interviewed Tori recently, and apparently she remembers me, and she likes to do cover songs of other musicians, and so I have requested for her to do a Tom Petty song. And she's, I think she said she hasn't done that before, and that's a good idea. So she might do a cover of a Tom Petty song, maybe Refugee or The Waiting or A Face in the Crowd, or there's dozens of songs that she could do. Um, so I might go see her in Seattle. She said she would like to see me again. So I might paint her and her daughter a pair of shoes in the Kring style. And um, it would be so cool to me if she did a Tom Petty cover because Tom Petty and Tori Amos, again, they are archetypal shamans to me. They are, are Jungian sim symbolic, like in Jungian terms, like yin, yang, balance, beyond duality, all that jazz. I love their music so much. I feel like this video, I don't know if this video has the depth that I want it to, but I think of Tom Petty and Tori Amos as very spiritual beings. That's it. They're both a little bit from the South. There's a similarity, actually. Tori's about 50 and Tom Petty's about 63. Um, so they're sort of different generations. But their music, actually, there's a similarity. They're both very prolific songwriters. They both have had very long careers, and they're still going strong. And they're both a little bit from the South. And they're both Native American. They're both part Native American. And they both have a very spiritual way of being musicians. Like I think of them both as very strong spiritual human beings that are channeling music. And it inspires me because I'm an artist too. I'm not a musician. I wish I was sometimes. I'm mostly a visual artist. I've also done some spoken word and some poetry. Tom Petty widens my jetty. Mick Jagger struts in, his dagger grabs me. Tori Amos doesn't blame us, but names us. Neil Young washes away the fertile dung. And that's a line of, of one of my poems. But I really, uh, I love musicians and I listen to their song lyrics. I'm very sensitive to, when I hear music, I see shapes. And Tori Amos has said some, when, sometimes when she looks at a painting, a song will come. She will hear the painting and she will write a song, partly inspired by what that painting does to her. Well, I don't have that, but what I have is the opposite. I listen to music 
and I see shapes. And so I think of music as sonic, Tori has talked about music being sonic shapes, like she's sculpting with sound. And it's true, when I hear music, I think of it like a three-dimensional, even though it's just audio and sound waves, I think of it like a three-dimensional space, like each song creates an atmosphere and a space. So I'm very, uh, I find Tom Petty and Tori Amos very inspiring. Their music soothes me. It cheers me up when I'm depressed. It wakes me up when I'm sleepy. It calms me down when I'm too hyper. It basically balances me out. Whatever I'm doing, music is so important to me. And I write poetry and spoken word. I wish that I could, I play piano improvisationally, but I'm not quite a musician, but I'm musical. I love Tom Petty and Tori Amos's music, their lyrics, their melody, their interesting songs. They have both written many, 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 many songs. And I really love what they do. And I'm happy that they're still around. And they've, oh, another similarity in them. They have both, I guess most musicians have faced hard times because the music industry is so messed up, especially now with all the digital, you know, uh, people stealing music for free and all that. Well, Tom Petty and Tori Amos have both dealt with with uh, fighting record companies and having to deal with bad record contracts, and they both fought and won. Tom Petty even filed for bankruptcy and fought against a record company, and he got the rights back to his music publishing. And Tori Amos had was dropped by a record company, or she had they wouldn't let her go, but then they wouldn't promote her. It's a long story, but I read about it in a book and interviews with her. And so I admire them both too because they're so brave and strong, and basically they embody traits that I want to, you know, I want to be more brave. I want to be more strong. Part of me is extremely confident. Part of me is extremely insecure. And like when something goes wrong, I get easily embarrassed or ashamed and I want to put my tail between my legs and hide. And I see Tom Petty and Tori Amos as heroic people who no matter what, they stay up there on stage, they share their music and people can take it or leave it. And there they are. And so they embody a lot of traits that I admire. I also just love the way they sound. Tom Petty and Tori Amos, they both make really beautiful music interesting melodies, strong, loving. They just love what they do so much, you can tell. And Tori recently in an interview said that music to her was like being on a magic carpet ride. You know, like that was the fun part, creating the music. The business side of it, that's the hard work part, the promoting and interviewing and touring. Of course, she loves to tour. Tom Petty and Tori Amos both seem to really love to tour as well. They love, and they both seem extremely good in the recording studio and extremely good live on stage. I've seen both of them many times live on stage. So I will just say that's why I love Tom Petty. Oh, and also Tom Petty. Oh God, this video is longer than I want it to be. Oh well. Tom Petty embodies so many traits that I like. Like he's sort of in touch with his feminine side and he's romantic and he writes beautiful melodies. And at the same time, he's angry and rebellious. So he's very masculine. He's, he embodies a lot of, he's very androgynous, masculine and feminine. I think of Tori Amos as in touch with her masculine side, being very strong and like, a, like, um, like a lion hunting, you know, like kind of masculine in a way. And yet she's quite feminine. So Tori Amos and Tom Petty both seem in Jungian terms, like they're in touch with their inner anima and their animus, their male and female aspects. They both seem very in touch with both of those. They're both from the South. They're both part Native American. They're both highly spiritual beings, I think. And, um, they've said things like that in interviews. And let me just say, I don't know. I guess that's it. I guess I just really am dazzled by them and inspired by them. And they, they feed me and they feed my heart and soul. And they remind me to follow my dreams, follow my heart, trust the synchronicity. And I hope I get to meet Tori again. And she plays a Tom Petty song. I mean, that would be synchronicity to me to have Tom Petty connected to Tori Amos live on stage, you know, I might never meet Tom, but I love his music so much. And I'm so happy that he does his music. And I have met Tori once, I would love to meet her again. 
and I hope that I can give her another pair of hand painted shoes and, and give a pair to her daughter. Um, and if she plays a Tom Petty song, that would just be really thrilling to me because I love his music so much and I would love to hear her sing a Tom Petty song because she throws a different spin on songs in her own Tori Amos kind of way. So there it is. So I admire them both for many reasons and be, and mostly because I see it's a mirror. I think of them as a, as a mirror to parts of me. They say that when you love or hate someone, it's partly a, a reflection of yourself. So I think what I see in Tom Petty and Tori Amos is probably my own potential. My own potential of being a hero and being strong and being in touch with my male and female side and being a balanced, whole, spiritual human being that connects with an audience and shares beautiful art. So that's why I love them both. And um, they feed my heart and soul. So I hope this video inspires you to follow your dreams. So I am Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring. Please write me with questions or comments. Go to my website, shannonkringen.com, and see the links to all of my different multimedia art, music, poetry, photography, painting, three blogs, all that jazz. So thank you. Follow your heart. Thank you for listening.